sorts of things. Okay. Um, I'm Sal Fiola from the University of Mobile, Thomas School of Computing IT in the UK. And um, I'm presenting this work that is part of uh, an undergraduate project. So it is my work, but also the work of one of my students. And uh, it is a work that has focused uh, particularly on the use of sand and light. Um, although there is plenty of speculations about uh, media online, as we can see from the study, uh, which is quite an informal study, we will see how the sand uh, is not exploited uh, or uh, even uh, underused. The study has focused particularly on the use, uh, on the use uh, of sand for shopping, uh, focusing particularly on online shopping. So we started with uh, understanding a little bit the interaction between uh, humans uh, and products uh, in uh, the physical marketplace. Uh, and we started looking a little bit, uh, first of all, on how people interact with the products in a market or, or in a supermarket or whatever. And the starting building an understanding, theoretical understanding uh, on the fact that uh, people do not shop just for convenience or for a chore. But also people like to shop because they like to shop, because they feel a sort of pleasure, and also because uh, they particularly like the social interaction. What do I mean with this social interaction? Well, this could be a simple exchange of uh, communication with, uh, uh, with somebody by the counter or with a shop assistant, uh, asking, for example, for a recipe about a product and so on. So, Particularly myself, uh, I carried out a study on uh, shopping throughout the centuries, how it has evolved. Uh, and we can see how, well, we can go further back uh, since, we, since humans start hunting uh, in order to provide themselves with food. But uh, coming further, further down uh, to more recent times, uh, we can see uh, how the supermarket uh, particularly have uh, Altered completely the interaction that uh, humans have with the products. It is too long. So, particularly nowadays, we can see how this so called shopping experience that is the interaction with the products, interaction with the marketplace, interaction with shopping assistant is the subject of many studies, and that the purpose is to make this. Um, shopping experience uh, as, enjoy, as enjoyable as possible. But, although we can consider the shopping experience uh, as an experience uh, and humans as a such being embodied, uh, so making full use of their senses, happens that online this creates some problems. Creates some problems, why? Because products have certain attributes what do I mean with the silent attributes? Well, first of all, uh, I'm not going to make uh, a sort of philosophical debate uh, on the fact that if products have got intrinsic attributes uh, given by nature, or if humans perceive the attributes in a particular way, so let's say the demarcation line between the real and the perception where it is, I'm not going to make this sort of philosophical debate, but uh, I think we can uh, at least uh, Possibly, not to speak it, but we can debate on the fact that uh, products, in a certain sense, uh, appeal to the senses of people. So, I'll make an example. If I say lemon, do I say something that uh, triggers what sort of faults in your mind? Definitely, it's not the fault of something that is uh, uh, testing sugary and so on. Or, if I say strawberry, for example, what sort of uh, of things of thoughts that are triggered in your mind. If I say coffee, but we can extend these uh, thinking of products like, for example, textiles that uh, appeal to the human and to the touch. So the first thing, uh, I think we have actually, we have 90% women here, the first thing a woman does uh, working, as, working in a textile shop is to touch the fabric. 
to assess the quality, to understand the product. We can call this one uh, qualities, we can, call it, we can call it information, we can call it data, whatever it is. But we can at least agree on the fact that as humans, we need to keep always in touch with the reality around ourselves. And in one the other, we always use our senses fully in order to understand the qualities of the product around ourselves, in order to make informed choices. Other products, for example, let's say uh, a CD ROM um, can appeal to our senses of hearing, music, and so on. So let's say that there are products, uh, particularly, that uh, fell in one category. So I would say, for example, CD ROM can, can fall in a category of products that appeal to the senses of hearing. And, uh, for example, a product like the coffee is a product that fell definitely in a category level of smell. Sometimes there is a cross categories like, for example, smell and taste. For example, coffee without the smell, uh, sorry, without the taste, it wouldn't smell coffee. But anyway, without uh, getting bogged down in this. Um, in this sort of speculation, we can now definitely think in our hands that uh, as a human, we appreciate the quality of products. And independently from what we mean by quality, uh, so that the matter is not uh, speculating or discussing on the quality of a particular quality or what does make a product a quality product. I'm just thinking of the fact that we need the necessity to use our senses in order to make uh, an assessment of a product. And this one can be an assessment based uh, on quality or whatever. So, the program uh, online uh, is, uh, is due to the fact that the interaction uh, is necessarily mediated through the site uh, and uh, so through video output and mouse strokes. So we can quickly understand the on uh, how some products are not easily sold online. And these particularly are the products uh, who appeal to the senses, like for example, smell, chest, so, and touch. Why? Because we cannot replicate easily online the touch or the textile. I cannot see, I cannot touch a fabric online, on the internet. Actually, we will still have a technology able to give us the, the perception of all the touch. And uh, the same way we can talk about groceries or many other products. So, up to now, the problem has been solved how? Well, by simply proposing picture and text, uh, text or description of a product in order to emulate a particular sense. So, for example, if I want to, if I want to sell some sort of textile online, I will make sure that I will present the picture of the fabric and possibly a close-up or a text or description that gives the possibility to the user to understand the post the quality of the fabric. But nonetheless, we can always say that this experience can definitely not be enjoyable as the bricks and mortar experience. So, why for what sort of reason? Because as we said, humans are embodied and as such are also embodied individuals online. It does not happen in practice that we are embodied in the physical world and then online we become disembodied. It doesn't work in this way. Many internet retailers thought that humans they were simply information processors, so a simple text or description would have been enough to sell a product. It is not like that. And we discovered this one after possibly five or six years and the expenses of many businesses gone bust.